Monarchs have the right to choose their own regnal name when they come to the throne, and it doesn't have to be their given name. Queen Elizabeth's father's given name was Albert, but he chose to be styled George VI to emphasize continuity with his popular father, George V, and because Albert would have accentuated his German heritage, something that would not have been popular in Britain in the 1930s, with World War I, a recent memory, and the Second World War with Germany brewing. Today, experts agree that Charles and his heirs will most likely choose to keep their given names. In our celebrity-obsessed media, they are already well known by their given names, and all three have names long associated with the British monarchy. So, Prince Charles, assuming that he outlives his mother, will be crowned King Charles III, the previous being Charles I, who reigned from 1625 until 1649, when he was beheaded by the revolutionary Oliver Cromwell. For 11 years following his death, the English monarchy was abolished in favour of a puritanical commonwealth. By 1630, Cromwell had died and his government had become so unpopular that Charles's son, Charles II, was restored to the throne. He reigned until 1685 and was known as the Merry Monarch. Partly because of the country's relief at being rid of the austere puritanical rule, they did make Christmas illegal, and partly because of Charles's fun-loving lifestyle and many infidelities. When Charles passes away, or in the event that the Queen outlives Charles, when she passes away, his eldest son William is next in line. William will become King William V, the previous being the illustrious William I, also known as William the Conqueror. He was the first Norman King of England who conquered in 1066 and ruled until 1087. Next was his rather less notable son, William II, 1087 to 1100. Dashing forward to William III, 1689 to 1702, also known as William of Orange. He was a Protestant German prince who was imported along with his wife and co-regent Mary II to replace an unpopular Catholic king. William IV ruled from 1830 to 1837 and his childlessness led to the reign of his niece, Queen Victoria. William's heir, and the one most likely to succeed him to the throne, is his young son George, who would be crowned George VII. Before him came George I, a German prince who was imported to rule after the Act of Settlement in 1701, which stated that only a Protestant could become King of Great Britain. Though there were 50 closer relations in various European royal families to the childless Queen Anne, they were all Catholic, and so George got the crown after her death. He ruled from 1714 to 1727 and founded the Hanoverian dynasty. His son, George II, ruled from 1727 to 1760 and was the last British monarch born on foreign soil. His son, George III, was king for 60 years, from 1760 to 1820, and prior to his granddaughter, Queen Victoria, was the longest reigning monarch of England. George III ruled during the American and French revolutions and the Napoleonic Wars. However, he suffered from madness believed to have been caused by the blood disease Porphyria, and during the last nine years of his life, his son, who later became George IV, ruled in his place as the Prince Regent, an era known as the Regency. George IV officially sat the throne from 1820 to 1830. Eighty years later, his great-grandnephew George V wore the crown from 1910 to 1936. He was a popular king during the First World War and changed the name of his family and dynasty from the German, Saxe, Coburg and Gotha to the solidly English-sounding Windsor, the moniker borne by the British royal family to this day. His second son became King George VI in 1936 after his older brother, Edward VIII, abdicated the throne after less than a year as king in order to marry the American divorcee, Wallace Simpson. George VI was the equal of his father and cemented the popularity of the monarchy while seeing Britain through the Second World War. He died in 1952, passing the throne along to his daughter, the current queen, Elizabeth II. What about the ladies? Will Camilla and Kate Middleton be queens? Watch the next video to find out. Future of the British Crown, Part 1. What will the next kings be called? Charles, Prince of Wales, will become king after his mother passes away. But what will he be called? Monarchs have the right to choose their own regnal name when they come to the throne, and it doesn't have to be their given name. Queen Elizabeth's father's given name was Albert, but he chose to be styled George VI to emphasize continuity with his popular father, George V, and because Albert would have accentuated his German heritage, something that would not have been popular in Britain in the 1930s, with World War I a recent memory and the Second World War with Germany brewing. Today, experts agree that Charles and his heirs will most likely choose to keep their given names. In our celebrity-obsessed media, they are already well known by their given names, and all three have names long associated with the British monarchy. So, Prince Charles, assuming that he outlives his mother, will be crowned King Charles III, 
the previous being Charles I, who reigned from 1625 until 1649, when he was beheaded by the revolutionary Oliver Cromwell. For 11 years following his death, the English monarchy was abolished in favour of a puritanical commonwealth. By 1630, Cromwell had died and his government had become so unpopular that Charles's son, Charles II, was restored to the throne. He reigned until 1685 and was known as the Merry Monarch, partly because of the country's relief.